Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be ranking the top 5 Soul Weavers you can use in PvE content. Now I know a lot of you players out there probably are using like Angelica for your Wyvern team, but you guys kind of need to expand on your Soul Weaver pool, and that's why I'm making this video to try to help you guys out, so you guys know what to build for future PvE content. Now before I get started with the video guys, if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get updates when my videos release. We'll be making these rankings slash tier lists very frequently, and also I am live streaming progression on a new free-to-play account that is only using 3-star units for fun, and I hope to see you guys in one of my live streams. Now, before we get started with the top 5 list though, we're going to mention some honorable mentions, so let's jump right into that. So first honorable mention we have is Lucy. So Lucy is sort of a side story limited hero. She's kind of like Basque in Cirilla. She has an Earth Soul Weaver, and if you guys don't know what she does, let's look at her skills real quick. So her S3 is a barrier to all allies and also decreases debuff durations by one turn, and the barrier scales with her HP. Her S2 is 100% chance to AoE restrict and decrease speed, and her S1 is a restrict for 2 turns single target. Now, her kit makes it so that she's very very strong in Katie's hunt. You can also use her in Banshee, um, Banshee one-shot team, she's very good. You can also use her in Light Expedition and Dark Expedition, she's not that great in Light Expedition, but she is usable in Dark Expedition, so that makes her very very strong. She's going to be a unit that you can use in mid to late game areas of content for PvE, and even though she's a 3 star, she's very very good. If you guys are looking for you know a way to progress in those hunts or expeditions, Lucy might be a good bet because her side story is also coming soon so you can pick her up and you will have her max imprinted for free. So very very easy to use, she's a 3 star so she doesn't use Molagora and a very very strong unit in my opinion. And the second and also last honorable mention we have is going to be Blaze Dingo. So Blaze Dingo is kind of a unique unit. So she, he is a light soul weaver, but if you look at his skills real quick, which we'll go over, and you're going to see that he's a little unique. So his S3 is a heal that also heals himself, and will also give him invincibility and increased attack. Now if you use his exclusive equipment, this will also give him um, greater attack buff instead. Now it's kind of weird, right? Why would, it, would a soul weaver give himself attack buff? Well, you'll see that the heal scales with his attack. His S2 is an AoE attack that also heals an ally with the lowest HP, and you're going to see that if you crit, you'll activate his S1. So basically, this heals based off the damage he deals. So you're kind of seeing a trend here, right? His S1 is a single target attack that also heals the ally with the lowest HP, and this also will increase proportional to the damage you deal. So he's a Soul Weaver, but he's a damage dealing Soul Weaver, and ever since he got his exclusive equipment, he's actually even stronger now because he has cleansing capabilities with his S1, exclusive equipment, and his S3 giving him greater attack buff is nice if you need more damage on your roster. He's a very very good DPS unit, he also has no debuffs so he won't trigger any cleansing effects or counter effects on bosses that have a debuff cap. So this really makes him a very powerful unit for PvE because he can heal and do damage. His damage is actually pretty insane as well, so I think if you pull him as a new player, consider building him, especially if you're trying to get into Raid where he's good in, you're trying to get into like Azimak, he's also good, he's also good in Abyss Floors, very very strong unit, very very underrated and underused, but I think he's a very very powerful PvE unit and he's definitely worth building. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the honorable mentions guys, now let's get into the top 5 list for real. Now at number 5, we have Angelica. Angelica, I won't go over her skills because you guys probably already know what she does because almost everyone starts off using her. She's also really free to play because you can get her from connections. She is a very, very strong unit though. You can use her in Wyvern, obviously, as most of you guys already know. But you can also use her as a general purpose healer pretty much everywhere. Now, you might be saying, what about Aimomo? Well, you can pair them together because a lot of harder PvE content, especially like Abyss and Raid, you're going to want two Soul Weavers or at least one Soul Weaver in a Knight. Uh, but Angelica fits that Soul Weaver spot really well because her heals are very, very powerful. And with her exclusive equipment now, she kind of fixes her problem of being very slow. She also fixes her problem of not having any cleansing because her S3 exclusive equipment can actually cleanse one debuff. You can also run her on the S1 one if you want her to CR push her team with her S1 whenever she goes. So very, very powerful unit, guys. She's also very, very tanky. So what you can do is you can have your 6-star Angelica in the front for raid and have your 5-star Aimomo on the side and not take the brunt of the damage and just be there to cleanse. So very, very powerful unit, guys. A lot of people think that you just, you know, use her for Wyvern and that's it. Well, that's wrong. You can use her in a lot of areas of content and I actually recommend it, especially for early game players, because you already have her 6 star and 6 star Awaken and built and skill enhanced. You might as well use her to her full potential. Now, after Angelica at the number 4 spot right above her, we have the limited Ice Soul Weaver, Dien. 
Now Dien's banner probably is going to run actually in a couple weeks, and she's pretty good, so you want to pick her up. Let's look at her skills real quick. So her S3 is going to be an AoE attack buff and crit hit resistance buff for 3 turns. Also we'll see her push herself. Her S2 is an AoE barrier that also will dispel 1 debuff and the barrier scales with her HP which she has a lot of. And her S1 is going to be a CR push on herself that will double when she is buffed which she'll mostly be pretty much all the time. And you're going to see that she cycles really fast so she can keep that attack buff on your team pretty easily. The only problem as you can see from her kit though is that she doesn't have a heal. She only has a barrier right? The thing is, you can't really use her without an artifact known as Rod of Amaryllis. That will make it so your non-attack skills heal. Without it, she's kind of unusable in my opinion, unless you run her with another healer. But even then, she's not going to really do too much. So I don't recommend using her until you have that artifact. But if you do, she's very, very, very strong. You can use her in Banshee one-shot because of her attack buff. You can also use her in pretty much everywhere. You can use her in Wyvern as well. She kind of can fit the bill of what Tamarin does because she has a lot of um, attack buffs for her teams, right? Uh, kind of why you bring Tamron as well because she's such an offensive threat. So you can actually pair her with a Momo and have her run as that attack buffer for your team that can also, you know, cleanse your team and also give your team barriers. So very, very powerful Soul Weaver. Especially if you don't have Tamron, guys, if you do end up pulling Deanne on her banner, I actually recommend using Deanne alongside another Soul Weaver for sure for a raid and abyss wherever you're stuck on because she's a very, very powerful unit for PvE and you can also use her in PvP later if you build her. Now with the number 3 spot after Dian, we have Rowana. So Rowana S3 is going to be an AoE heal and that gives you a revive. Her S1 is a single target attack that gives a barrier to one ally. And her S2, pretty much the main reason why you ever bring her anywhere, is going to be a heal slash CR push for her entire team whenever her team gets attacked by an extra attack, counter attack, or dual attack. Which is the main reason why in PvP you see her as a counter to like Rem and like SSB. But in PvE, this is really good because a lot of bosses actually have a lot of counter attacks or extra attacks or dual attacks, right? And the thing is, you can always just bring her and your team will get perma CR push and like perma healed. Very, very good in raid. You actually need her for every single boss in raid if you want to auto hell raid. She's also very strong as an ice expedition tank. She's also very strong in Katie's Hunt, best frontline unit by far in Katie's Hunt. If you are looking for a Katie's team, you definitely want Rwanda and you definitely want to use her there. She's also very strong in episode 3 of Adventure. If you guys are struggling with a lot of bosses there, because I see a lot of you guys struggling. A lot of you guys come to my stream and are like, how do I beat so-and-so boss in episode 3? The easiest answer is just bring Rwanda. She's just so powerful. A lot of bosses there have extra attacks or counter attacks. And Rwanda makes the boss super easy. You can cheese every single boss with Rwanda basically because of her S2. It's constantly healing your team and CR pushing your team. Definitely one of my you know, recommended must-pull units for PvE because she's just so powerful. And that's why she's at the number 3 spot. And then at the number 2 spot, this should be no surprise to you guys that, these, that she's on the list. We have Angelic Montrancy. So Angelic Montrancy, I'll go over her skills in case you don't know. Keep in mind there's some extra effects that are in her skill tree when you awaken her, or not awaken, when you complete her specialty change quest. So there's some extra effects that you won't see listed. But in general, her S3 is a single target heal that grants immunity for 2 turns, dispels 2 debuffs and gives her 50% CR, and you can soul burn this to do use this on everyone, and you'll see the cooldown is very short. If you're manualing PvE and you really need a huge heal, just soul burn her S3, it's very very powerful. Her S2 is an AoE heal that also dispels 1 debuff, and is very very powerful as well because it's a 2 turn cooldown. Her S1 is a single target attack that has a chance to sleep, you're not really going to use this too much because her cooldowns are super short and you're just going to be cycling and healing and cleansing. Now she's very good as a wyvern tank, a little bit squishier than normal tanks because she's a 3 star but still very very strong and you can pretty much bring her everywhere. Even if she's at an elemental disadvantage, she's the best cleanser in the game, um, barring none, right? So you can bring her into raid, she's very very good in raid, very very good in expedition, very very good in um, abyss, very good in automaton tower, very good pretty much everywhere. It's hard to think of a spot that she's not good in, even in like golem and like earth expedition where she's at an elemental disadvantage, you can bring her there if you are lacking a healer. She's just that powerful. And for that reason, she is a must, must, must build for specialty change units. Uh, I actually recommend building her first out of every spe um, specialty change unit in the game. You're definitely going to want her as one of like your first three or five six stars in the game. She's just so strong, guys. If you guys don't have her build yet, what are you guys doing? Um, please build her. She's just so strong. And that is why she, has a she is at the number two spot. And at number 1, should be no surprise to anyone, it is everyone's most wanted unit if they don't have her yet, we have Tamarin. So what Tamarin does is, she starts with her S3 on cooldown, and every time she uses her S2 or S1, the cooldown goes down by an extra turn. So if you actually mola this, it's actually kind of like a 4 turn cooldown instead of an 8 turn cooldown because you're getting an extra 
um, turn shaved off whenever you use S1 or S2. And basically your S3 would turn her into an idol. And what that does is she full heals and full cleanses her entire, well she full heals herself and then full cleanses her entire team and gets an extra turn. And then she transforms her S1 and S2. So her S2 in normal form is just an AoE heal, but in idle form, it is an AoE heal that also gives everyone attack buff for two turns and also CR pushes by a huge, huge amount. If you max this out, it goes to 50%. It's actually insane. Her S1 in normal form is just a single target attack that heals one ally. In idle form, it's an AoE attack that strips all buffs and has a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. It's very, very powerful, guys. You can use her. She's basically a cleanser, a healer, a attack buffer, a CR pusher, a stripper, and has forced dual attack. She literally has everything in her kit besides defense break. It's insane. You can bring her everywhere. You can bring her in every single expedition. You actually want to bring her in pretty much every single expedition. You can bring her in Abyss. You actually need her for late um, late game Abyss floors. You can bring her in Golem, Azmanac, Hades, everywhere, right? The only thing you can't bring her is Wyvern, unfortunately, but you're not going to have Tamron in the beginning of the game anyways. So everywhere else besides Wyvern, you want to use her. She doesn't have any PvP usage though, but this ranking is for PvE, and Tamron is by far, in my opinion, the best unit for PvE. So yeah, that pretty much covers my Soul Weaver PvE ranking slash tier list, guys. Keep in mind that this is my own opinion, and if you guys disagree with anything, you guys are allowed to. Just let me know down in the comments down below why and what unit you think should be higher or lower or is missing from the list completely. As always, guys, thank you for supporting my channel, guys. We're at 10k subscribers. Let's go for 20k, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button to help a fellow content creator out. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you guys next video slash live stream.